China might now be finding its groove when it comes to original, quality motorcycles to market in Europe. And I always tried to be fair to Chinese brands. Also, some Chinese bikes like the 800NK, 450SR, and 600i are very good products. But some copycat motorcycles show old habits still die hard. Welcome back to SK, where we are exploring Chinese motorcycles that look suspiciously familiar to some well-known motorcycles. So without wasting time, let's dive in. Moxeo MX650 and Moxeo 500. Of all the motorcycle brands to take inspiration from, going for Ducati as your muse is akin to going for the king, as your bloodthirsty target. Prestigious, desirable, iconic. No manufacturer does thoroughbred motorcycles quite like Ducati. Indeed, it's a hallmark that commands respect in all corners of the world, enough to surely deter any impersonator from being brazen enough to do it the disservice of an impression. Enter Moxio, one such very brazen Chinese motorcycle company. In fact, its brass is so bold that it has not imitated one Ducati, but three models to pedal in its domestic market, not to mention a rather unconvincing take on the BMW R1250 GS adventure. Having made headlines last year with its first effort, the Ducati Panigale 959 inspired Moxio 500RR, which was so off the mark that even the color wasn't right this time. The firm has set its sights even higher with these questionable renditions of the Panigale V4 and Street Fighter V4. Not so much a mirror image, but a very blurry cracked one. The Moxio MX650 brings seven years of bad luck with its mimicking of the Panigale V4 a model that appears to have been stuffed in a motorcycling equivalent of yoga pants by bulging in all the wrong places. The look is wing tipped off with a pair of would-be aero devices that we suspect only serve to provide extra grip when you accidentally snag a bag on it. It is just as well then that the MX650 doesn't have much force to push down, its 650cc parallel twin engine wheezing in at a rather breathless 66 HP. Quite a fair few ponies, less than the 211 stallions packed into it, would be very distant relative. The appeal doesn't multiply on the more intricately styled MX500, which distills the sporting elegance of the Street Fighter V4 into a hunk of ill-fitting plasticky panels, again flanked by winglets that are all show and no airflow. Then again, one must admire the attention to detail of the fake gold Olin's forks and Brembo-style brake calipers. But really, if you covet a Rolex, would you really nip down the market for a Bolex? Huang R6, perhaps more than any other manufacturer. Yamaha has been ripe for a target among enterprising Chinese firms looking to prize a quick buck out of the population by using its models as a tracing exercise. While this is substantially more effective than the amusingly titled Yayama, it's funnier if you say it out loud. Huang has not only put a fake mustache on a Yamaha and called it their own. It's even called the Wait For It R6, Credit where credit is due. This one appears to have been painstakingly recreated with a successful take on the prominent nose and slender headlights, though leaving it with the same R6 side fairing logo as the Yamaha is just a lazy giveaway. Fortunately, there are some jazzy fluoro yellow wheels and inserts to distract and sizzle your corneas. But anyone hoping for some similarly hot footed thrills on the road will be disappointed to know the 500cc engine coughs out 37 bhp rather than 118 bhp. Still, if confused branding is your thing, not only has Huang gone to the non-effort of not changing the name, but there's an HRC sticker, a non-licensed MotoGP logo, and of course a hash 46 on the nose to give off some Valentino Rossi vibes. In short, this is the perfect motorcycle to confuse the DVLA, which might be actually worth something. Daeung Kai 302. The 200-300cc bracket is a saturated motorcycle market in Asia, so how is one to make your urban roadster stand out from the crowd? You shrink the design of the Air Sports Tourer Kawasaki Z1000. Indeed, without the benefit of scale, you might be thinking the Daeun Kai 302 is a bigger motorcycle, but in reality, it'll fit in your hold luggage. In fairness, the Z1000 is not a bad choice to replicate being both unremarkable and understatedly handsome at the same time with Dayon doing a solid job of replicating the front end, especially before distracting you altogether with some funky day glow paint jobs. Just don't get it in Kawasaki green though, have some class. Shengxi GK350 or Zan Test GK350. Honda pulled off quite a trick when it launched the Neo Sports Cafe, look that has gone on to adorn the current generation CB1000R. 
CB650R, and recently launched in the UK CB300R Naked. It's a style that has become rather commonplace across the motorcycle market with its blend of retro ideology revamped in a contemporary finish. Others skirt a little closer to what is fair use and others just pop it in the photocopier. In the case of the Shengxi GK350, it's even pointed directly at its hero in the marketplace, standing with its circular headlamp, multi-spoke rims and front brake covers. From the side, we may detect a bit of Royal Enfield Himalayan, but fair play to Shengxi, if you're going to imitate anything, go Big Red. Moxeo MX 507D. Well, here is a name we recognize albeit still can't pronounce. Not content with creating some cringing scaled Ducati fan art, Moxeo has taken its penny and gone right in for the pound with its foray into the adventure motorcycle sector by lifting the design of the daddy of them all, the BMW R1250 GS Adventure. Demonstrating a fair amount of moxie, see what we did there, the hallmarks of Europe's best-selling motorcycle are very much in evidence on the MX 507D. From the winking headlight arrangement and the crash bars that could be BMW if you squint, take a few steps back and open your mind to a world imagination. However, if your mind is closed and you don't have time to travel, then there is no excusing the form over function approach to a motorcycle that looks about as capable of scaling rocky terrain as it does making common sense. Also, is MX 507D the name of a motorcycle or a COVID vaccine? Hanwei G30. If the general consensus among Chinese imitators is to mirror an affluent model and sell it as cheap as dim sum, what happens if the motorcycle you happen to be reimagining is already a pretty bargain bin already? Well, in the case of the Hanwei G30, a Chinese take on one of our favorite Indian takeaways, the Royal Enfield Himalayan. You believe it or not, upgrade it. As far as cases to answer for, the G30 is a particularly faithful take on the pint-size off-roader, but instead of mimicking its basic sensibilities and honest mechanicals, it has gone ahead and added a TFT dashboard, a BS, and an LED headlight. It even matches the Himalayan's otherwise modest power output with a 26 HP from its compact 250cc engine. Zionglong JSX 500i. We have saved the best worst until last. Despite the fact you probably don't recognize the motorcycle, the Zionglong JSX 500i is copying. Indeed, lifting the design of an existing motorcycle is one thing but it is entirely another to do so of a model that hasn't even gone on sale yet. Yes, this is the Zionglong JSX 500i, the doppelganger of the TVS Zeppelin, a concept model first previewed in 2018 and slated to go on sale in 2024. Turns out that was too long a wait for Zionglong, who simply went ahead and beat TVS to the market, boasting an almost identical front-end profile, and even the distinctive side panelling that reminds us of a gun from Moonraker, snooze you lose. While most manufacturers seemingly no longer have the willpower to navigate their way through red tape to go after these cheeky impersonators, surely there is a sinister line being crossed when dumbed-down intellectual property is getting out there before you've even turned your property into a product. What is your experience with these replicas? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Until next time, Ride safe and stay tuned for more on the SK channel.